Well, I'm sure I have a mixed audience here. For all women who feel female bosses favor the male colleagues and for all men out there who feel two girls can never be friends with each other. Let me help you today to redefine how girls don't break girls. If a girl with a short dress wants to walk like that, let the girl with a long dress not blame her and shame her. If girl 35 wants to leave a man, let girl 55 not hold her back even if she gave her birth. If a girl wants to let a boy touch her, let another girl not be too quick to judge her. If girl blue wants to sit on the iron throne, let girl green not act on her envy. If girl quiet wants to stay home with her thoughts and fears, let girl loud not scream boring into her ears. Let girl too much makeup wear makeup. Let girl dirty dance dance. Let girl workaholic work. Even when we stand alone and apart, each one of us is a star and together we are a sun. I have been hearing a lot of talk about women bully each other. While I accept that we are wired to be more catty, competitive and mean, but let me also take the privilege of saying that we are one of the most loyal, committed and empathetic species on earth. I was having a chat with my teammate recently when he cracked that age-old joke of put 10 men in a room for an hour and they most likely will come out as friends and do the same with 10 women. What do you think will happen? I smiled and said, they two would come out as friends. He laughed hard and said, no ma'am, in most cases, these 10 ladies who were together in that room will come out, no doubt smiling, but with daggers in their hearts. <sighs> While he continued to laugh at this joke, I felt deep down, this issue of why do people still think this about women. I'm often shocked when I see women mocking another woman for wearing that short dress or judging each other when they work from the office or are home managers. I'm still unsure as to why a single woman is considered vulnerable or why are women supposed to marry at a particular age and have babies at another age? Who put these norms or rules for us? Why is it that we still hear, Oh, you have a female boss. God bless you. Or, how can you even think of having a smooth relationship with your mother-in-law? Remember, she loves the same man who's your love of life too. Can you imagine? There are described terms as to pull her down syndrome where women pull each other down or women bullying women a very commonly used term at workplaces i wish people were as excited and supportive about women's career milestones personal development and travel journeys as they were about pregnancies and engagements while i know all of this that we just spoke about is true. But we also have some beautiful stories, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, where empowered women empower women in real time. These are my stories and I'm sure a lot of you will be able to see yourself through my narratives. I started working at 21. After graduating from my engineering college, I quickly grasped the tricks of social media marketing and became a community manager. I remember when a lady client met me, I didn't get much positive vibes from her. 
I was new and raw in the media marketing industry and was really working hard to prove myself. This marketing hit of one of the biggest fashion brands gave me a real hard time. Most of the times, she kept rejecting my presentations, campaigns and ideas. I truly felt like a fool. In a presentation to the senior board, where there were five men and one her. She rejected all my work again. While the others did not seem to have any issue with it. In a nutshell, I knew that she truly hated me. I felt, how could one woman pull down another woman? So, I sat, strategized, worked even harder and was ready with more material. She asked me for a change in the boardroom and the work was shown in a jiffy. Eventually, the ice broke. She could understand and started being more humane. And during our conversations, we realized we were quite akin. You know what I learned from her? When someone pushes you to a corner, only then can you shine brighter. I owe a lot of my professional success to her today. Thank you, Ms. Klein, for being such a tough nut. Moving on, when I was a child, I wanted to become a doctor who dreamt of inventing a vaccine for HIV, AIDS and cancer and all that I thought was unsorted. My cousin, who was a research scholar in the US, saw me all pepped up as a young girl and made sure that every year she sent me research papers and doctor talks to ascertain that fire in my belly is ignited forever to be someone. So here was one empowered woman making sure that she empowers another young girl so as dreams become a reality. My most favorite narrative of all times is that of my maternal grandmother who was apparently one of the first educated girls from a small town in Punjab, India. She got her graduation degree along with a job as a government school teacher. She worked relentlessly to shine. Once she got married, she, like a lot of other women, gave priority to her family and hence her career went on the back burner. But when the time came for her daughter to either pursue a career or take care of her family, my grandmother made sure my mother wouldn't make the same sacrifices that she as a woman had to make. So while my mother continued with her job, even when I or my younger sister were just a few months old, my grandmother took proper care of me and my sister. Can you imagine not seeing your seven or nine months old baby for a week? I must happily admit that, yes, my mother did choose her career while my grandmother supported my parents. We still call my grandmother our ma and our mother as mama. A salute to my nani and all the other grandmothers who made sure that they teach us the true meaning of being a woman and let their daughter or daughter-in-law shine by being their supporting system. So here was one woman empowering another woman and making sure that she lets her grow and prosper. I love the efforts of women who have come out of their houses and are working as domestic help, auto rickshaw drivers, janitors and breaking the societal shackles. How inspiring is it to see the percentage of women in C-suit roles inching up each year. I'm glad to see more young and old girls choosing to start a business which makes them feel much in control. What an inspiring story of the Chandigarh grandma who at the age of 94 started her own Basin Barfi's business. I am amazed at how we as women are capable of doing anything only if we truly believe in ourselves and in our tribe. There is anyway.
too much of pain gap, me too, glass ceiling and patriarchy. Fighting with each other for upmanship or validation should be the last thing on our list. Let me end the talk today by saying, never has it been a better time to be a woman. Never have women had such tremendous opportunities as they do now when they are running companies, countries and are in financial and emotional control of their well-being. As women, we have to rise up at this moment and each empowered woman should empower another underprivileged woman and start spreading the message of girls don't break girls. They make, yes they make, countries, economies and a society a better place with their love and compassion. So, next time, this colleague of yours who wears some extra makeup, compliment her. When your neighbor auntie gets into a multi-level marketing system, congratulate her. When your younger cousin graduates and starts a business of her own, send her a cake and wish well for her. At least you and I can surely stop body shaming, bitching, slut calling each other and celebrate our sisterhood. Let us all be our own heroes from here and today. Three cheers to womanhood and being one. Thank you.